Right here we go, our Ruby Lawn Graduation. So I'll section off the top according to her natural parting. So I'll take the natural parting, this section just to the left of it, and from here, I'll over direct the hair straight out from the roots, over direct the hair forward, and I'll cut in my graduated guideline. Notice the graduation again is going from shorter in the front to longer in the back. So my next progressive section, I'm standing at the opposite side shoulder because this will allow me for the greatest amount of control because of my natural tendency to over direct the hair to my center of balance, like my chest basically. So by standing on the left side while I'm creating the right side, it allows me to use my natural tendency as an asset as opposed to as a liability. Okay, so from this point, I'm over directing every section onto that original guidelines, that point of over direction. So as we work towards the left, our lengths are becoming longer. So that, that way when the hair falls naturally, we'll still get that symmetry and balance. This is a technique that you'll find yourself using quite often if when your client wears a side parting. If the ruby were to wear a center parting, then I would cut everything symmetrical. But again, to take into consider the way the hair falls naturally, I'm working with over direction just to get that symmetry and balance. Okay, and always work with super clean sections. The reason why you need to have super clean sections, one, it allows you to see so many more details. Okay, so now that we start to work through the sides, I'm still over directing the hair, but now I'm over directing the hair to the point of the left side's parietal area. And when your sections are super clean, you're you're more able to visually assess whether or not you've combed the hair perfectly clean from roots to your guideline. Because for myself personally, the hardest part of like cutting long hair is actually my, my combing the hair. I, I kind of see things different. My scissor hand, just my scissors there just to remove the hair, but actually the control comes out of my left hand. It's where I place my fingers, the way I control the hair, where I comb the hair properly. Okay, now on the opposite side, I'll jump to the left side shoulder. And from here, I'm starting right at that parting. I'm combing the hair straight out. I'm over directing the hair forward. And I'm again, cutting in my graduated shape. Now make sure that your over direction is consistent throughout the front portion of this haircut. And a really strong telltale sign that your over direction is on is when your guideline is super, super clean and obvious and evident. If you're over, if you over direct the hair too far down or too far up or too far to the left or too far to the right, you'll find that guideline gets super, super, super like fuzzy. It's not clear. It's messy. It's dirty. Because we already have so many section cut at that same exact point. Once we comb the hair to the exact same point where we technically put in those lines, those lines are super clean. So that's why, again, I like when I stroke the hair, when I comb the hair, I don't comb it too fast because I need to give my eyes and my brain ample time to make all these visual assessments so I can gradually like set the hair at the where my over direction is and then take the hair down. Okay, so now for the back portion of the cut, I'll separate both sides. And then from here, I'm combing the hair straight out from the crown area and I'll just chip in my shapes. I'm not cutting in square lines to the back because I want a, a more of a textured feel. So again, the back area, every single section is combed out and over directed to that exact same spot. So we're gradually building up length. And notice with this cut, I didn't go in and cut in like my one length and then my 3D, my technical shape. I just jumped into my technical shape. So I really didn't go in and polish out a one length because once the hair is dry, I can go clean it up a bit. Chipping into the ends. The reason why I'm cutting with a bit more texture through the back is because 
I permed her hair, so I still have a little, I still have some of that big wave left in it, so I don't want too clean of lines. If I wanted really super clean shape, I wouldn't have permed it. So I, I want a shape that falls a bit like heavy, textured. So again, adapting my cutting technique will fulfill the end result that I intend to create. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to jump into the blow dry. I'll be finishing her hair off with a diffuser. So I just go in and just separate the top area, just say from like the, above the occipital bone to behind the ears. Blow the hair up with tons of mousse, gel, gloss. And I'll just go in, I'll just do little ringlets with my fingers. And as I start off my diffuse, I like to like hit the root area first and then the ends because the roots have a, a tendency of needing more time to dry and the ends dry faster. A lot of times when people jump into the ends first, the ends dry really fast and then but the roots are still moist so you have to go back and still dry the same area and it'll encourage the ends to go really frizzy. So you have to be careful with curly hair because once it loses its moisture, it has a tendency seriously to get really like frizzy. And frizzy looks, it doesn't look expensive, it looks quite cheap. Or if you find it inconvenient to hit the roots, you can just like comb the roots out like this. And first focus on the roots, and once the roots you feel like it's maybe 60% dry, and then go into like roots to ends. Because again, with the diffuser, the way our hand falls, it's much easier to dry the ends than the roots. So again, if the ends are dry and then you go and hit try and hit the roots, you will, chances are you will over dry the ends and they go really frizzy and fuzzy. And frizzy and fuzzy isn't the type of finish look that will up your ticket and build your retention level. So just again, aiming at the roots first and then I'll work it through the ends. It could be done either way. I just find myself in salon. This is a more practical way approach to doing my diffuse finish. Okay, so now that we're almost there, I'll just like start elevating the hair and just drying the hair really organic. I try not to touch the hair or like shift it around too much while it's drying it, especially with the diffuse because it has, again, a tendency to go a bit fizzy. The shape's in the haircut. Okay, so now that we're dry, we're gonna go back, texturize, and refine our shape. So here's a texture. I'm just looking for symmetry and balance and an even distribution of that weight. And then once I get that symmetry and balance and that even distribution of the weight, I have to see how the hair falls naturally because my shape also has to visually check in, not only technically. So sometimes you can cut technically perfect, but the visual end result looks really terrible. Yet you have to find a happy balance between the two because the client sees the, the visual result. <laughs> only the hairdresser understands the technical push. Slide cut into the hair, just removing like weights of fines, areas that fall a bit heavy and rigid then I'll go in and break up that area a bit more. And again, since I'm working with, uh, just my aim is like for symmetry and balance, sometimes what I do to the left side, I don't have to do to the right side. So with the refinement here, not everything is 100% technical. Again, because the hair texture, the density levels and stuff like that, after it's been pruned, they kick into place. So again, technically check in and visually, you have to get those both in. And now through the fringe area, I'm just gonna go and point into the shapes a bit so notice towards the front, I didn't texturize that much and I'll just hit the heavier areas even more so. Okay, well there we have it, our Ruby over-directed graduated haircut. Enjoy.